regarding the methods and tools section. The presentation is prepared by myself, Daniel Strauss, David Newton, and uh, Elizabeth is also there uh, from the group of Sebastian of uh, Daniel. So I would like to provide a summary of the activities we, we uh, embarked on as part of the group to introduce in a better way what was the scope. Let me explain what was the actual aim and motivation of this working group, which had to do uh, with the uh, accumulation and the compilation of the, uh, of the library of tools that can be used uh, for analyzing the value of information. It was, of course, the work of other work groups to define for what value of information is, but we found ourselves, in fact, doing it by uh, specifying the difference diagram that I will show you on which we have based all of the framework of the value of information, at least as we understand it, and in an effort to make uh, to introduce something like a vocabulary, something that will allow us to discuss on, this, on the same terms. So the concept of value of information, I think it was already explained by Michael Faber that it is rather a new concept and one that seems to cause a confusion, and I will agree with him. I remember being part of a work group meeting in Munich where we, we had intense disagreements as to the process of the, of the value of information coming from different experts in structural health monitoring or in reliability analysis. But the important thing is that indeed in the end we could agree on the main um, uh, objectives. So, what I mentioned before that we introduced as part of our uh, working group an influence diagram. Uh, which supports the modeling uh, process for the method. The objectives that we try to address, um, first of all, gathering these tools along is a, is a large task, also because they are defined in different contexts and you can find them uh, available as tools for reliability analysis, for uncertainty quantification, for a, a number of different projects but never brought together in the context of uh, value information that is really a more extensive uh, cycle. Uh, the main objective of our group identifying, developing, and critically overviewing methods and tools required for the VOI context. And, some, and uh, finally, also the standardization of the vocabulary, which of course is a rather challenging task, and I'm not sure we, we can say we have completed, but we're glad to have started uh, working on it. So uh, the achievements, and I will present them uh, one by one in uh, the presentation that follows, are essentially defined within these objectives that we set out to uh, address. Uh, the first one has to do with the uh, aggregation of fact sheets that really contributed to the identification process of the methods that are involved in the value of information framework. Um, and let me start actually by this. So as mentioned, this is the influence diagram on which we base the vocabulary we try to develop and also the methods that we will consider as fitting for this task. A number of fact sheets have been submitted throughout the course of the action. And so here I will mention some of these that basically form part of this diagram. But before I do so, I would like to uh, allow Elizabeth uh, a few words on the description of this conceptual diagram. data and um, 
parts of the diagram. Uh, it was already mentioned that uh, they relate to different parts of the ASHM process, uh, the condition of the spectral system, and then also interventions. This is the color uh, the, uh, indicators that you see. And of course, the hours that are the processes, and usually that's where you find the methods and tools. Now, in the fact sheets, we are happy to have gathered representative works that fall in this category, the main categories of the influence diagram. Perhaps uh, one of the most critical ones being the one of the indicators, because really what will decide our judgment as to how to act on the system is the indication of the condition. It's really the part that comes straight forward, the out, out of the spectral health monitor. So here we have the fact sheets, fact sheets on extraction of vibration-based damage indicators and a demonstrator on the Zinco and report, which uh, by uh, uh, different authors, uh, Maria Pina in the first one lead, led the fact sheet and then Edwin Rangers uh, for the second case. Additionally, we have the situation where we have uh, members in the post action that have access to different ways of collecting information by monitoring. So from the group of uh, Alvaro Cunha in the University of Porto, we have a fact sheet on a digital repository of data that is available for structural health monitoring. We're talking about the collection from uh, their um, deployments on a number of bridges throughout Portugal, as well as some uh, uh, cases of uh, wind turbine facilities. Uh, on the level of new, let's say, or emerging sensing technologies, we have the work of Kashabe uh, uh, and on the, um, wireless sensors that are used for uh, monitoring of the footbridge. And then we also have the fashion by his own, in the case of uh, ship house structures, because of course we're talking about engineering systems, so not, tip, not necessarily what typically one would uh, refer to as a structure. On uh, closer now to the, um, to the point of methods that have to do with uh, this inference diagram, we have a fact sheet on reliability updating based on monitoring quantities uh, by uh, Leia. And we also have the work of uh, uh, Papa Dimitriou on Bayesian analysis methods directly related to this uh, action or this process 9 here, which leads observations that come from SHN to the actions that we're about to take. Now, for the actual decision support procedure, how do we decide on taking these actions? We have to go a step ahead from updating, and that's where we have uh, the fact sheets by myself and uh, 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 Professor Papa Gustavo, an external uh, collaborator of the action on partially observable markup decision processes, one of many options one can use for this decision support in the face of uncertainties as well as the fact sheet on uh, identification and prediction, model falsification. This could also be tied to updating, but it's perhaps a, a tool that is promoted as decision support uh, for engineers and operators based on the formulation of specific, uh, uh, let's say, boundary intervals for our decisions. So, other than the fact sheets that we have gathered, and which you can find available on the web page of the action, there is also the working group three related conference papers in the domain of dissemination that contribute to the development of new methods. So there you will find information that is perhaps closer to uh, uh, state-of-the-art knowledge or forefront research. And these you can also find on the web page of the action in the relevant uh, uh, catalog for um, scientific papers. I just list some of these here, but you can, of course, uh, find the complete uh, list posted. I want to also invite the ones that haven't made disseminated papers that are falling in this category to contact uh, Sebastian because this could be, uh, this list is updated continually. And then finally I come to some more, the more practical achievements of this working group or at least this is what we consider. Uh, the first one uh, uh, has to do with the establishment or the collection of this library, a software database on value of information and uncertainty quantification document. This is a document that is available for all members of the action through the repository of the action. So you will find it in the working group free folder. Uh, what essentially this does is collect, uh, in one case, some of the tools that are available that we could identify uh, that could be used in different components of the process of the value of information diagram. I won't go through this uh, extensively because it was presented also in Como, 
But I will show you an example of, of the use of such a tool. And actually, it's not me, this will be, um, let's see, here, this will be by um, Elizabeth on this. Uh, the use of Gini, which is a software that can be used as a modeler or a graphical user the interface for vision networks. So maybe we can switch to briefly go over the example.
calculus what we call the uh, benchmark of the action, the tool for verification, which is nothing more than a, but a simple example. Uh, it is a structural system for which we provide a modeler. So we provide a tool online which can do the simulation. It's a two-span beam, essentially, which uh, is simulated under bending uh, using uh, plane elements and for which we have included scenarios of different deterioration effects. The purpose of this benchmark is to use it as a simulation of a scenario that you would like to enforce the value of information concept and put it on. Let me show you some examples of what the benchmark right now can do, and hopefully you give me feedback on what you would like it to, to add. So we have prepared um, essentially a Python code which is open source for those interested but also an executable for those that are, don't, do not care to go into the code that you can run and get the analysis of this two-span uh, beam essentially. The input properties uh, are defined by the user, so it's the material, the thickness and the operational loads that could be, uh, that are usually uh, dynamic. There's also environmental um, variables such as temperature that define the properties of the materials and also deterioration agents such as corrosion. Does it work? Yeah. Corrosion, or you can also have cracking in a very simple manner as a local reduction of the stiffness of the plane elements. Uh, and then you have the output, which is in the form of uh, model analysis information, but also time history information on acceleration strains and any other quantity you want to extract it from a, a typical financial model. <coughs> so here is how it works. Actually, let me show you in our uh, how you would call this GUI. specific variables for deterioration that I will explain. You can basically have the output which you can use in any way you wish for any kind of analysis, whether it's reliability, fatigue assessment, and so forth. So, uh, should be, yeah, post processing these are the examples. The most shapes that you would get in the case where you have one data concentrated here on the support, and you get the first some most shapes, depends on what you specify. It's really a simple model that can serve as a, uh, as a common uh, simulator. Okay. So, a bit more on the functionalities now. What can you specify there that is useful for such an analysis? Here it is. First of all, the data scenarios. Right now we have a lot of data in different uh, <coughs> sections. You will be able to specify where you wish the data to be assumed because perhaps you are running in the context of an identification or a detection problem, how much the extent of damage is, um, and then we have also your custom scenarios in that sense. Uh, you can specify the temperature influence on the unit's volumes. One thought we have is to also improve humidity, uh, and perhaps some custom loads of the evolution of the elastic properties with respect to this uh, temperature. For now, in the simple, uh, in, in the beta version we have now, we only have a pre-specified dependence, but this can change to put your custom dependence if you wish. Um, additionally, we, uh, we have another source of deterioration that has to do with corrosion, and here we assume corrosion, it's a simple example, so it's assumed as a reduction in the thickness of the elements, of the plane elements. Uh, and what you can specify is basically the uh, corrosion wastage, which based on predefined pre curves that we have used from the literature, will tell you essentially what will be um, the thickness of that you have to impose on the final element. And the 
finally you have the outputs, I already showed you the model analysis case, or you can have a time history analysis, which will give you outputs in the form of acceleration, here, or strain, whichever you would like to have, and of course any kind of input force that you uh, wish to, to simulate. At the end, you can use this for all sorts of analysis. One of the other options for us is to, to check the de deterioration by looking at the, um, the, the degradation in the frequencies, but also the effect of the deterioration on mode shapes, which could be revealing some uh, uh, localized, some the locality, the locality of the damage. Or you could uh, think of using it in the context of the wrapper, uh, so you would have uh, another code that is using the simulator in order to attempt to do reliability analysis uh, or even uh, the decision support tools that I showed before. Okay, so what was the point of this? We, we have tried to set up something that is a common reference, a common uh, application. We would like to collect your input on what would be additional features and we will leave you to work as testers. So we essentially try to use your tools and demonstrate on this uh, benchmark. Um, and I don't know, I guess maybe here I can invite some, <laughs> uh, some volunteers to see if they could use their tools. I mean, I can already think that Maria Pena could use it for model detection. I could think that Costas could use it for page and update, but I would like to think also of other applications, please come to me with suggestions. Any chance to get a commitment for it? What about Sebastian? What, what would you think of demonstrating this song? Is there something you could use it for uh, using your tools, let's say? So I'm going to take it sure as a commitment. <laughs> By the way, we will post it on the website. Uh, and maybe there should be an email inviting these, uh, these users to test it and send us ideas of what to do with their methods on it, let's say. Yeah. 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 So then there could be an paper that you have this demo session and you can use it. Um, okay, I already mentioned this. And finally, for us, the lesson is to learn. As I said, it's very difficult to develop a vocabulary or even a diagram. It seems to be a common reference for everyone, but uh, for sure it helps. It is at least the first step to making us a society. Uh, so, in that sense, I, I definitely believe it's worth doing so. So, thank you for your attention. Any, any questions? Uh, Uh, now for the last two, which is uh, really useful, I think. Yeah. So, so thank you for putting that in Munich. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, two things for the temperature. Could it be maybe useful to allow us to, to uh, include the influence of the temperature on the proper conditions? I don't know. To simulate some. Yeah. If it's possible, I think it's possible. Yes. Uh, 
established the detection and localization of the implement. I don't have resources to uh, get to translate that in Python or not. Ah, no, but it is that. that uh, no, but I should say the purpose should not be that this is extended too much. It would be that you use it with your map. So I will give you the access to this as an executable and also how to call it from macro. Ah, and then you will use it with your algorithm mm -hmm. and okay. give us a demonstrator. This is what, uh, okay. so that we don't make it specific in terms of system identification or monitoring or. Oh, you could just put something else. Since it's that way, you can put something else. But of course, maybe. maybe it, could, it could be, but at its core, this should remain the simulator, really, the, okay. the, the, the model there. Yeah. The simulator of the, of the response not being yeah. able to analyze the data. We should be on top of this approach, but I, we will give you how to call it from Matlab, from uh, Python, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And it will be very useful for the library as well. Yes, uh, that's true. So, so. Some slides on how it worked, let's say. 
how, how your methods perform from the... This is a super idea, this is a super idea. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. And, uh, but we also have some resources, or may have some resources left. Mm -hmm. So four options, as you can So uh, that yes. is nice. It can be supported. Actually, yes, sure. If that's an option, we have to be great if we can use it in the next update somehow. Yes, yeah. please, uh, please request, uh, request now to the uh, next. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yes. So you have in mind the workshop that is about the use of this, for example? For instance. Yeah, yeah. We'll be Whatever great. it is. Okay. If there's no more questions, that's it for me.